Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be going on an adventure in the Honeybee neighborhood into Harold's doggy dream. Have you ever wondered what dogs dream about? Oh, I want to know. I want to know. Well, let's find out. Right behind you, Mrs. Honeybee. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. You are here in the honeybee neighborhood, strolling through the forest of trees that are filled with birds singing their songs. You've decided to take the secret way to the honeybee house, cutting through the forest, just like Harold showed you on your last walk together. You're on the lookout for the tree with a hole in its trunk. That's where you're supposed to turn right, which will lead you directly to the backyard. The sun is shining down on you through the trees and the leaves crunch beneath your footsteps. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose let the fresh air fill your lungs. Then slowly breathe all the way out through your mouth and continue down this little hill. The forest that surrounds the honeybee neighborhood is bursting with activity. But just up ahead, you see one quiet tree the one with a hole in the trunk. You tiptoe up to it, knowing you need to be as quiet as possible when you peek inside. Standing up on your tippy toes, you peek in to see the friendly owl who lives there. He slowly swivels his head around and winks one eye open from his afternoon nap to say hello. He loves it when you stop by on your way to visit us. You leave him to enjoy the rest of his nap and take a right turn. That's when you see our backyard. The sunflowers in the garden are even taller than the fence. They seem to smile back at you as you unlatch the gate and walk into the backyard. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Melody B is on the other side of the yard, collecting dandelions that are newly fluffed and ready for wishes. She already has a handful picked by the time she sees you come through the gate. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Holding enough dandelions for everyone, she buzzes over to say hello. Oh, hello. You came the back way today. Did you see the owl? Did he look okay? He has new neighbors, the woodpeckers. They do not understand his need for daytime naps. They're up early pecking wood just when he's settling in for bed. He's actually been a little cranky lately. <laughs> Here, I picked you a dandelion. I have one for Harold, too. I know he is so excited to see you today. I'm surprised he's not out here already. Come on, let's go inside and find him. Harold? Harold? Where are you? Hello, my little honeybee. I'm so glad you're here. I was just looking for Harold, too. I thought I heard him. Do you hear that? Yeah, I do. Where is that coming from? Mrs. Honeybee, Melody Bee, 
He's in here, in the office with me. Come look at this. Around the corner from the kitchen, we follow Mr. Honeybee down the hallway and into the office. That's where we find Harold snuggled up in his big cozy bed. He didn't hear us come in because he's still fast asleep. This is where he sleeps while Mr. Honeybee works on the computer. He looks so peaceful sleeping there until suddenly Without waking up, his ears twitch, his paws move as if he's running on air, and he sleep barks without moving his mouth. Harold is dreaming. Watching him, we huddle in close so we don't wake him up with our voices. I've been in here researching robots all afternoon. By the way, I think I know just how to build one. But, well, anyways, I keep hearing this noise. And I look down, and Harold is running and barking in his sleep. I've never seen him do that before. Look at the way his paws are stretched out like that. It looks like he's flying. Oh my gosh, it does look like he's flying. I wonder where he's flying to and what he's dreaming about. That's exactly what I was thinking, so I looked it up. I wasn't sure if dogs can even have dreams, but they do. Dogs dream about what they know, dog stuff. He's probably dreaming about the dog park. He loves it there. But he doesn't usually fly at the dog park. Does he even know what flying is? I mean, I fly, but he's never tried to. Well, that one time he did, but woof, that did not go well. He tried to fly? Yeah, it's a long story. (gasps) There he goes again. I wish we could know what he's dreaming about. It looks like a fun dream. You and Melody B both look down to the fluffy white dandelions in your hands at the exact time. Then you look at each other and smile, knowing that wishes do indeed come true especially when you have plenty of dandelions that are fluffed and ready. You hold your dandelion up, twisting it around and around as if to say, not only can we wish to know what Harold is dreaming about, but we can also wish to be in the dream ourselves. We can wish for that? Mr. Honeybee, we can wish for anything. Look how fluffy these are. They're just waiting for a wish. We look over to Harold, who is still sound asleep. We each take out our dandelions and hold them out together. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and wish to be in Harold's dream. Then, slowly breathe out through your mouth and blow lightly on the dandelions. White seed fluff flies all around and surrounds us like the softest, puffiest clouds. You feel yourself being lifted up within this cloud. We can feel our bellies drop like we're on a roller coaster. We're not in the office anymore. You land gently on new ground. It's so soft beneath your feet that you think it's grass. You look down to see that the ground is actually bright yellow and fluffy, like it's made of feathers. 
You've never seen grass like this before, but now it's all you see. We are standing in an endless field of it. You reach down to scoop up a cloud of softness, but it blows away before you can stand back up. Out of the side of your eye, you see Mr. Honeybee take a slow step forward. You turn to follow close behind him. Instead of your footsteps sinking into the soft grass, like they usually do, you feel buoyant as if you can float. Without trying and before you can even realize what you're doing, you glide all the way across the field of feathery yellow. Trees suddenly appear off in the distance where there weren't any before. Gliding on the air, you take a quick turn toward them. The closer you get, the bigger the trees become until they are gargantuan. You and Mr. Honeybee make a game out of winding back and forth through their gigantic trunks. You grab hold of one to stop gliding and lean your back against the trunk to catch your breath. Leaning your head back against the sturdy tree trunk, you realize that this tree is bigger than any tree you've ever seen before. The leaves have changed colors and they fill the treetop overhead. You look through them up to the magnificent blue sky. The sky seems more or less normal, and that reassures you. You take a moment to enjoy the breeze and the sunshine you love so much. You point out a little flock of blackbirds that we watch fly overhead. Along with their chirping, we also hear a familiar but oddly placed clicking sound. Are the birds clicking? I think it might be the sky. We join you by the tree to take cover from the strangely clicking sky. Mr. Honeybee holds his hand out flat against the trunk. He slowly pushes against it and his hand disappears into the tree. He quickly pulls his hand back and hugs it into himself. You decide to try it too. Looking at the tree, it doesn't seem like a dream tree. It seems real. But when you test it out with your own hand, it disappears just like Mr. Honeybee's did. You decide to test it further. You take a couple steps back, then run as fast as you can toward the tree trunk. It evaporates as soon as you touch the bark and you're able to jump right through like it was a cloud. You emerge from the other side victorious with your arms up and circle back around just in time for Melody B to find something peculiar. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Investigating the bushes just behind the trees, she plucks a few leaves off and holds them up. That's when you realize the bushes are all different shades of blue. Melody B turns around and says, Wait, I think I recognize this place. She buzzes all around the bright blue bushes looking for something. When she sees it, she carefully rummages through the leaves before reaching down to grab a handful of sticks. 
These are Harold's favorite fetching sticks. He hides them in these thorny bushes so no one takes them while he's gone. We're at the dog park, but it's so colorful. We must be in Harold's dream. I knew he was dreaming about the dog park. So Harold dreams of the dog park in bright colors? Oh, I think I know what's going on. He doesn't just dream in these colors, he sees in them. Dogs can only dream about what they know, remember? And Harold cannot see the colors green or red. No dogs can. So we must be seeing the dog park as he sees it. Whoa, that must be why the trees are so big. Huh? The trees look smaller to me. Oh, oh, I get it. Harold is bigger than me, so the trees are going to look smaller. Oh, okay. <laughs> this just keeps getting stranger. Just then, another flock of birds fly back in the opposite direction this time. They click and squawk as they fly overhead. A few of them swoop down towards us to land on the branch right above you. They settle into their spot in the tree and click back and forth to each other while we watch, puzzled. Then they look down at us, wondering what we're so confused about. Mr. Honeybee, in all of your research about dog dreams, did you read anything about clicking birds? I honestly don't know how I missed that. If we're in Harold's dream and seeing things as he sees them, then we're also hearing them as he hears them. That clicking sound is Mr. Honeybee typing on the computer in the office. Harold's incorporating the sounds around him into his dream, just like humans sometimes do. No way. Whoa. <laughs> the clicking birds fly off into the sky, and we slowly fan out into the feathery yellow field to take in the full view. The world, according to Harold, is bright, peaceful, and curious. We get a glimpse of his closer to the ground perspective, which makes the big world seem even bigger. There's so much to explore, and nothing is as you expect it to be but something is missing. Look all the way to one side and then all the way to the other. There isn't a single dog at this dog park. Maybe Harold dreams of having the whole park all to himself. We continue walking through the field to see what else appears out of thin air. Walking through the tall grass, Mr. Honeybee wonders. Wait a minute. If this is Harold's dream, shouldn't he be here? We shade our eyes from the bright sun and look all around. All you can see is the field, the trees and bushes, and more birds flying through the sky. You look over your shoulder because something catches your attention out of the side of your eye. You spin around just as something whooshes by. It went so fast that you couldn't quite tell what it was. We look up into the sky for it to come back. And suddenly, coming from the other direction, we see the shadow of floppy ears that we recognize. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Harold, and he can fly. Harold swoops back down around us, 
skimming the tall feathery grass with his paws. He then shows off, flying around you in circles before soaring back up into the clear blue sky. He flies in zigzag patterns like a plane and he even does flips in the air to fly upside down. We all cheer as he heads back down to the ground. When Harold lands, he's so excited to see you. His tail wags with enough excitement to wiggle his whole body. He knew you were visiting today but time was moving so slowly while he was waiting. He would look out the back door, watching the gate carefully, waiting for you to open it. Harold took a few too many naps, trying to make time go by quicker, and accidentally fell into a deep sleep. At least he didn't miss your visit entirely. Harold parades us around his dream, proud to show us his world. We follow along wondering what we'll see next. The birds have stopped clicking and instead are filling the warm air with chirps and songs. Grasshoppers are hopping The butterflies are fluttering around bright blue flowers. The sun shines down as you take big steps through the tall grass that gently blows against your legs. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel your chest and your spirits lift. Then, slowly, breathe out through your mouth. You feel so relaxed and peaceful here. A butterfly with soft white wings flutters up to you, so you slowly put your hand out to meet it. The butterfly lands on your hand and sits with you as you walk to the other side of the dog park where the line of trees stand along a river. A grasshopper challenges you and Harold to a hop race. The butterfly flutters away and you take off hopping as fast as you can. It's a three-way tie when you all pass the trees, but the grasshopper gets up ahead with one last hop right onto a lily pad that's floating down the river. You and Harold come to an abrupt stop at the water's edge with a little splash. There's something else he wants to show us. He trots up to an old gnarled tree with roots that stick out above the soil. Its branches twist and turn so much. There's one thick branch that trails almost all the way down to the ground. Harold jumps up onto it and looks back at us to follow. You're able to hop up onto the branch with both feet. Mr. Honeybee is right behind you. Harold walks along the branch and climbs up the rest of the way until he disappears into the treetop. Melody Bee flutters up ahead to make sure we don't lose track of him in the infinite dream world. Can you give me a hand up, my little honeybee? You and Mr. Honeybee reach out your hands and together we climb the old gigantic tree. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot. The leaves rustle as we climb higher and higher. Still a little ways higher up in the tree, Melody Bee gasps. Is everything okay up there, Melody Bee? You have to see this. Hurry, come up, come up. We rush to climb the rest of the way and stop when we get to one of the tallest branches. From here, 
we can see a full view of the Honey River that runs throughout the whole Honeybee neighborhood and up to the majestic mountains. We carefully walk sideways along the branch, balancing with each step. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Harold is sitting at the end of the branch, waiting for us to file in. Beside him, there is a very friendly sparrow who waves a little brown wing to say hello. Melody B points across the river to the other trees in the forest. That's when you see them. All the dogs aren't fetching in Harold's dream dog park. They're flying. One by one, you see all the pups that usually fill the dog park leaping from the tall trees and soaring through the air right along with the birds. The sparrow next to us nudges Harold with her beak. She's been helping Harold practice climbing trees and even flying. The sparrow politely nudges Harold again and again, pushing him closer to the edge of the branch. He lets out a confident bark and leaps into the air at the same time as a Dalmatian on the other side of the river. That's exactly what Harold did the last time he tried to fly. From the back of the couch, though. He didn't get too far that time, <laughs> luckily. I was able to get a pillow down there to catch him. Actually, I guess that story wasn't so long after all. Anyways, <laughs> he's gotten a lot better. Look at him go. He must have been watching the birds take off from the branches. This is his favorite tree at the dog park. We sometimes just sit and watch the birds. I didn't realize he was studying them. With all four of their paws outstretched, Harold and the Dalmatian glide through the air and meet each other over the river. They fly upstream together toward the mountains until they turn into little dots in the distance. We are shocked and wonder to ourselves if we can fly in this dreamland too. Harold comes back from his flight with his poodle friend and quickly gets distracted by something in the bushes. He charges into the blue bush and frantically flails around in the leaves. We can't really tell what he's doing down there. Harold! Is everything okay? Do you need us to come down? Harold finally emerges from the bush with a black frisbee in his mouth. Is that... I think it is. That's Harold's lost frisbee. Look, it has his paw print painted on it in white. But usually it's red. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dogs cannot see red or purple or orange or pink. I'm so happy he found it. He was heartbroken when he lost it that day. He couldn't bring himself to fetch for three days. Aw, he looks so happy. Harold looks up at us begging with his eyes to play fetch. Melody B flutters down to him before she notices we aren't following her. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Come on everyone, what are you waiting for? Can we fly in Harold's dreams? Just then, the tree branch below your feet begins to rattle. Where there was a sturdy branch, now feels like sand. We struggle to maintain our footing. There's no choice but to jump from the tallest tree in the dog park. 
holding hands like friends about to cannonball off a cliff. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and prepare to jump. As you breathe out through your mouth, take a leap of faith from the tree. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Melody B meets us in midair, where we are falling in what feels like slow motion. We look like astronauts floating on the moon as we flail in the air. For a split second, we are actually flying. Before, we all land heavy on our feet in what looks like the living room of the honeybee house. We stand perfectly still, crouched in place for a moment to get our bearings and figure out where we've landed now. We stand up tall and continue looking around for clues. Is this another dream? You turn around to see Harold happily sitting behind us. Is that dream Harold or real Harold? We all look together at the same time, but cannot decide for sure. This looks like the living room just as we left it. There's our comfy couch. There are Harold's chew toys still out. And there are our books stacked on the end table. We begin to move around more and tap our arms, shoulders, and faces to see if we're real. Harold yawns a big yawn and tilts his head side to side, curious about what we're doing. Is this real life? I don't know. Try pinching me. My dear, I am not going to pinch you. How else will we know if we're in a dream? <laughs> I'm sure we can figure it out. Come on, Mr. Honeybee. Here's my arm. Oh, fine. I'll pinch you. Ow! Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Honeybee. Are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm just fine, Melody Bee. And I think we're actually back in real life. Harold, you sure gave us quite the adventure, little guy. Harold gallops over to us, eager for pets and belly rubs. He's doing what he usually does when he first sees you. He doesn't seem to know that we are actually in his dream with him. Harold pauses and sits up for a moment as if he's forgotten something. Then he scurries off to the kitchen where his leash hangs on a little hook on the wall. He runs back at top of speed and slides across the floor to us when he means to stop. With his leash hanging in his mouth, he whimpers to go for a walk until we agree. You click him into his harness and we head out the door. Usually, we enjoy peaceful walks around the neighborhood, but today, Harold seems to be on a mission, trying to make us go faster. Harold, slow down a little bit. You're going to tire yourself out before we even get to the dog park. What's going on with him? Your walk turns to a slight jog. You go faster and faster, trying to keep up with Harold's pace. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel the coolness of the fresh air. Then, slowly, breathe out through your mouth and run with Harold as fast as his little legs can go. Harold's white fluff and ears are pushed all the way back. Together, we run all the way to the dog park. He can barely stand to wait outside the chain link fence 
while you open the first gate and then the second. With his leash and harness off, he finally slows down a little. We follow him all the way across the field, just like we did in his dream. The grass has returned to its usual color, a brilliant green that glistens with dewdrops in the bright sunshine. The trees are back to their regular size and the bushes are no longer blue. Overhead, the birds aren't clicking anymore either. It's another crisp, beautiful day at the dog park. You stop for a moment to take in the natural beauty around you. Up ahead, Harold charges toward the same old gnarled tree that we saw in his dream. He stops in front of the bushes and holds his snout up high to sniff the air in every direction. With his nose to the ground, he walks along the bushes until he finds the right one and disappears into the leaves. We stand outside of the bushes waiting for him, trying to peek in through the leaves to see what he's doing. The leaves rustle with commotion before Harold leaps out from the bushes, proudly carrying a bright red frisbee. Harold, you found your favorite frisbee. <laughs> and exactly where it was in your dream. Holding his frisbee in his mouth, he tilts his head to the side confused about how we know about his dream. He sits down with his ears perked up as if they are waiting for an explanation. I'll explain later, Harold. This one <laughs> really is a long story. You grab the frisbee from him and throw it as far as you can across the dog park. It spins and glides through the sky before Harold jumps up and snatches it from the air. He runs back right past us, smiling the whole way. He again wants us to follow him to the tree, just like he did in his dream. He hops up onto one of the thick, low branches that sprawl out from the tree trunk. Harold walks along the branch choosing his footsteps carefully to slowly climb the tree. We cannot believe what we're seeing. Mr. Honeybee pinches himself just to make sure he's not dreaming. Ow. Melody Bee leads the way, fluttering as we follow closely behind her. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot. You look back down behind you to see how far up we've gone and we're higher up than you expected. Harold keeps going with his frisbee, still in his mouth, undeterred by the heights. When he gets to the tallest branch that reaches out over the river, he carefully balances until he sits down at the end. When we get up next to him, we can see that, just like in his dream, he has met his little brown sparrow friend up here. She waves hello as we each carefully sit down on the branch. Our feet swing below us and we look over the river toward the majestic mountains. The setting sun casts a spectacular pink light against the mountains and the rushing river sparkles as it catches the last bit of late afternoon sunlight. You wish that Harold could see just how brilliant the pink hue is, but you look over at him and see how happy he looks just to be here. Here, at his favorite place, 
in his favorite tree with his favorite people. Little did we know the fun that lives in our tiny friend's dreams or that he could climb trees. One question looms in our minds as our feet happily swing up high in the tree. Does Harold climb up here simply to sit with the sparrow? We get our answer before anyone can ask the question out loud. Harold hands his frisbee to his little sparrow friend. She takes it into her beak and takes off into the sky. She glides through the air in circling patterns before dropping the frisbee in a random faraway spot. Harold moves to action, jumps branch by branch all the way down the tree and chases after the frisbee. The sparrow returns to her cozy spot on the branch and waits for Harold to climb back up. This is what Harold does at the dog park for so long some days. He's found friends to throw the frisbee for him when our arms get tired. Like we always say in the honeybee neighborhood, you can never have too many friends. Sometimes it's the little ones in high places that can teach you to soar in your very own special way. Always remember that Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.